so thank you, Matt and Jack, for having me come tonight. Um, and also, good job to everyone else who came and was brave enough to tell their story. I would like to start my story off with everyone imagining something for me. I would like you to imagine what you think a computer programmer looks like. Once you have that image, raise your hand if this person is wearing glasses. Raise your hand if this person is in a graphic t-shirt or a hoodie. <laughs> Raise your hand if this person was a guy. Oftentimes, when we think of who a computer scientist is, we think of someone who's nerdy or geeky, and more times than not, that character is male. So when I first started programming, I didn't tell anyone. I was really nervous because I'm not what a computer programmer looks like. And honestly, I never thought I could do it either. I'm not a math genius. I actually struggled a lot in the maths and sciences. And where I excelled were the arts. I did Irish step dance, theater, painting and drawing classes. I played guitar. And so when I first started programming, I really surprised myself when I loved it. I am mostly self-taught in computer science. And honestly, it was really hard. I struggled a lot to work through what could be considered simple problems for some of my other classmates, and it would take me hours to solve one problem. And what I noticed in a lot of my classes was that the guys in this class seemed to have such an easier time. It would take them minutes what would take me hours. And I wondered, why is this? Why do they seem to ha be having an easier time? And I learned that some of it boils down to the fact that they're given different tools as children than we are, us girls. The best example I can give you of this is a toy aisle. When you go down a boy's toy aisle, you see toys that teach ingenuity, innovation, spatial awareness. When you go down a girl's toy aisle, you see kitchen sets, Barbie dolls, dress-up toys. So those are two very different things that we're teaching our children right from the get-go. And then I did a little digging deeper because although there are more toys aimed toward get more girls into computer science, like Legos aimed towards girls and engineering toys like Goldie Blocks aimed towards girls, I still wasn't seeing many women. And I learned that some of it also happens in middle school. Because in middle school, we want to fit in. We want to figure out where's our clique, where do I belong? And most girls don't want to be the nerdy computer geek. And that's where part of the problem lies, is this idea that to be a computer programmer, you're some guy who sits in his parents' basement with a graphic t-shirt and his glasses on, drinking nothing but energy drinks and coding all day and only talking to your friends online. <laughs> so my goal is to change that. I hope by the end of this talk, you all have a new idea of what computer science is and what type of person can be a computer scientist. I believe computer science is an art. I believe it's a computational art. I believe it's the, the bridge to the gap between science and art. That's why when I decided to teach my computer science class, I named it Art of Code. This was an all-girls computer science class that I taught for grades 9 through 12, and I had a particularly artistic gang of ladies. I had artists and dancers and creators, and I'm really glad that I did because they were able to use the abilities they already had for art and creativity and apply that when I taught them how to make video games and electrical engineering projects. In this class, we focused a lot on female pioneers in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And I allowed them and gave them the freedom to be creative when they would design and make bird feeders that couldn't let any squirrels in, or sew electronics into clothing, or program video games, or when we would, um, uh, you know, do things like design tools that would use kinetic energy for people who don't have access to electricity. Now, a lot of those girls didn't become programmers, but that's okay. During this, class that I taught, I was nominated for an award. It's called the Computer Science for Rhode Island Student of the Year Award. And I won. 
Thank you. With that came a lot of publicity, but also a lot of pressure. I felt so much pressure to improve and do harder things and live up to a certain standard that I had to be this great computer science student. And that, I think, brought to light a lot of things for me that I was dealing with that I didn't completely understand. And also a lot of things that people didn't really know what was going on with me. Computer science touches just about every field now, even mental health. Today there's something called computational psychiatry. It's very new, but the idea is that it will be able to help the one in four people who do have a mental illness, like myself. When I was 17, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 1. Now initially, before my diagnosis, I was experiencing symptoms and I was really scared, honestly. And I went to go tell my mom that I needed some help. Well, in my family, we never really talked about mental health before. And needless to say, I didn't really get the response I was hoping for. So instead, I went to my aunt and I told her, I want a therapist. So we sat down at lunch and she said, Tatiana, go on psychology today, find a therapist in your area. And I did. A couple of days later, I was driving to a private practice to pick up papers, and those papers sat on the counter until I'd had a really terrible day at school. And I went to the social worker at school and I told her about how I was suicidal, about how I had stolen pills from my grandparents just in case I wanted to take them, about my ups and downs, and I got into therapy that day. But even after that, even after that, I was still struggling a lot. I'd had a few bad weeks in a row, and I ended up driving myself to the Newport Hospital and telling them, I want to kill myself. And I got into Bradley Hospital that night, and honestly, that was an amazing experience for me. I met so many amazing people, and I got to really work on myself and grow as a person while I was there. Computer science and mental health may be an odd combination kind of like uh, peanut butter and Oreos. You don't think it'll be good at first, <laughs> but then when you try it, it's actually really good. I had to rediscover who I was and figure out how to manage and accept these new parts of myself that I never expected. And computer science helped me with that. It was an outlet for creativity for me, and it really helped me manage through these new parts of my life. I love the work that I do in computer science and education, and I'm still learning to love myself, even with a mental illness. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana.